long before humanity could remember. In the enigmatic and ancient region where the sky touched the earth, there lived a woman by the name of Naama. Her captivating beauty and captivating charisma made her a household name throughout the whole area. Even the celestial creatures known as angels were drawn to her charms because she was so endearing. Naama's narrative is one of seduction, beauty, and a descent into evil that would permanently change not only her own fate, but also the path of history. Naama lived in a realm in which angels wandered among people, a world in which the divine and the earthly coexisted. The angels, especially Uzzah and Azazel, the two most powerful angels, were drawn to her as she was the first female. These angels, though of angelic stock, were forced to come to Naama. She was as stunning as one could possibly hope for, and her presence was as alluring as the best wine. One fateful evening, when the sun descended below the horizon and the sky turned a deep purple, Naama met Uzzah and Azazel. A burst of light descended from the heavens, and they had a yearning that revealed they were celestial creatures. Naama glistened with starry eyes and flowing hair as she stood in front of them, captivating and fearless. You are the person you are. She asked in a voice as soft as a whisper yet as powerful as a hurricane. We are angels, Uzzah retorted, his voice full of sorrow and longing. We came to view the beauty of the world, but now we are completely captivated by you. Azazel stood next to Uzzah and could not take his eyes off Naama. You are unlike any mortal we have ever seen. Naama, there's something about you that captivates us for some reason. Knowing she had the upper hand over these angelic beings, Naama smiled knowingly. She was attracted to them for no obvious reason. It was an inexplicable longing. Naama became the first woman to wed a fallen angel as a result of that sad night. When she allied with Uzzah and Azazel, she stepped over a line that was never meant to be stepped over. Their union was both amazing and awful. Naama began to change now that she was joined to these powerful angels. She was no longer just a lady. She was something bigger and darker. Because of their desire for her, the angels grew more and more evil, and as a whole, they began to pollute everything in their path. Naama's beauty, once a source of admiration, became a beguiling and deadly weapon. She learned how to manipulate and entice people with her allure, drawing men and other angels into her web. Her impact spread like a shadow, darkening the hearts of everyone who encountered her. Another legend from the ancient Zohar claims that Naama and Lilith, two additional extremely beautiful and powerfully evil women, corrupted the angels Uzzah and Azazel. They had fallen from grace because their union with these powerful women had soiled their celestial nature, which had once made them arrogant and pure. Naama has such might that she also attracted devils to her. Her seductive aura drew the attention of the demon rulers of Phryra and Castamon, who would pursue her nightly. But Naama was cunning and elusive. She would always dart away just in time, taking on multiple personas to entice angels as well as mankind. At this point, Naama had completely changed into the malevolent spouse of a fallen angel. She enjoyed her power so much that she spread anarchy and corruption. Angels had once adored her, but they were now entangled in a web of evil and would never be able to free themselves. Naama's beauty, which had once been a gift, had become a curse that had imprisoned her and everyone around her in an unfathomable pit. Over time, the mythology around Naama expanded. She evolved into a menacing and seductive figure that stood for the dangers of unrestrained desire and the corrupting power of beauty. Whispered was her story, a warning that the temptations of forbidden love may seduce even the purest of souls. Naama wasn't the only one who made an influence. Her deeds changed the world she departed from forever. The fallen angels continued to pervert people's hearts and minds even after they were banished to the world of mortals. The difference between the divine and the mortal had been irreversibly blurred, and the consequences of Naama's actions would be felt for many centuries to come. A woman named Naama used to reside in the dark areas where the boundaries between the worlds of the holy and the mortal are hazy. Her unmatched beauty mesmerized both men and angels. Her story is one of seduction, power, and a descent into darkness that sowed a web of corruption that permanently altered the lives of many. Naama wasn't like other women. Every person who laid eyes on her could not help but be enthralled with her. 
Her great attraction drew even the celestial beings, the angels, to her beauty. Among the angels who fell prey to her spell were the formidable Uzzah and Azazel. Their fall from grace is the starting point of the story of Naamah's transformation into the most evil spouse of a fallen angel. Although Naamah's ability to entice angels is well known, not much is known about her malevolent side. Naamah liked to play with human sons as much as she did with angels. She appeared in their dreams, fulfilling their deepest desires. Naamah used these thoughts to reproduce, turning what was once considered macho desire into something more sinister. These were not merely daydreams. In the dead of night, men would dream of Naamah. She was a vision of beauty and seduction, leading them into a world where their passions might be let loose. She took from them the essence of these dreams, the ultimate manifestation of masculine desire. Naamah gave in to this need and got pregnant. But these were no ordinary children. Rather, they were demons conjured up by her own demonic essence fused with mortal desire. These demon children, conceived in the thoughts of men, were brought into the earth by Naamah. Being pure evil, they brought chaos and corruption with them wherever they went. But Naamah's influence didn't end there. Her sons with these men went out into the world looking for women. When these women conceived from the spawn of the demons, they gave birth to spirits, ethereal creatures trapped between the divine and the mortal sphere. Spirits and devils alike, all these offspring, were enticed to the original Lilith, the mysterious mother of them all. Like Naamah, Lilith was a strong, malevolent creature. After embracing them, she reared these children and taught them the ways of the shadows. Under her guidance, her children grew strong and cunning, turning them into agents of corruption and mayhem in the world of the living. Naamah took the final step toward becoming the most vile spouse of a fallen angel. She reveled in bringing darkness to earth by using her ability to do so. Her once gifted beauty had become a curse that had imprisoned her and everyone around her in an incomprehensible hole. Every night, Naamah continued her dreary labor. Her seductive aura drew the attention of demon kings Ephraira and Castamon, who pursued her with relentless resolve. But Naamah was cunning and elusive, constantly managing to get away from them. She would take on multiple personas, each more seductive than the last, to keep enticing men and angels. Her influence developed rapidly, looming large over the world. The evil she unleashed twisted and deceived men's hearts. In times of turmoil and instability, spirits bearing human mothers and offspring of demons flourished. Naamah changed the world forever by her actions, which left a legacy of wickedness and horror. Her once admired beauty became a deadly and misleading tool. She spun a web that entangled men and angels by using her charm to her advantage. Naamah had an affect on anyone who encountered her. It cast a shade of darkness over their hearts. Her deeds erased the line between the divine and the mortal, irrevocably changing the world she left behind. In Talmudic and Midrashic literature, Naamah is often depicted as a human woman endowed with these remarkable powers. She gained notoriety for seducing men, and it was said that none could withstand her allure. Her combination of beauty and music created a tremendous trail of yearning and longing behind her. Her charms were irresistible to men, and many found themselves entangled in her web and unable to escape the spell she cast. While Naamah was practicing her symbols in a beautiful garden one day, she noticed an angel named Shamdon, also called Shamran. Shamdon was unable to withstand Naamah's attraction, even as a celestial divinity. Attracted by the heavenly music and her alluring beauty, he descended from the skies to meet her. Because Shamdon was completely fascinated by Naamah, just like many others before him, their encounter proved to be fatal. Their union was uncommon and also against the law. Between Shamdon and Naamah there existed a desire that passed beyond the boundaries of the celestial and the mundane. The offspring of Naamah and this marriage, Ashmedai, would later rule over the devils. Having inherited both his mother's seductive beauty and his father's celestial strength, Ashmedai was a formidable man in his own right. As Ashmedai grew, it became clear that he was not like other children. His strange charm and darkness made him special. He received his mother Naamah's years of practice in deception and seduction. Ashmedai swiftly became the demon king, 
even exceeding his mother in skill. Using his inherited abilities to control legions of spirits, he sowed chaos and corruption over the nation. Further exploration of Naima's transformation from a human seductress to an inhuman spirit can be found in Kabbalistic literature, particularly in the Zohar. These esoteric literature portray Naima as far more complex and malevolent. She becomes a powerful, demonic spirit and is no longer the charming woman who attracted angels and mankind. Further exploration of Naima's transformation from a human seductress to an inhuman spirit can be found in Kabbalistic literature, particularly in the Zohar. I appreciate your viewing.